When you think of the impact of climate change, what do you think of? Perhaps you think of increases in extreme weather, like heat waves and droughts. Perhaps you think of reduced access to food and drinkable water. But whatever you think about, sooner or later, one particular image is going to come to mind. The threat of sea level rise. Sea level rise threatens to literally reshape our planet, changing where humans can live. It could wipe out low-lying island nations, not to mention the hundreds of millions who live in coastal cities around the world. And when tropical storms strike, storm surges bring seas even further into land. For all of these impacts, every single centimetre of sea level rise matters. But the thing is, we simply don't know how many centimetres the oceans will rise. This is Dr Ella Gilbert, a fellow YouTuber and climate scientist. Unlike me though, Ella still does research and is an expert on all things icy, which is why I've drafted her in to speak on this video. We have another video over on Ella's channel which will discuss all the things that we'll leave out of this video. More on that later. Sea level rise is a tricky one to predict because it's driven by so many different processes. It doesn't help either that those processes are some of the hardest to observe on Earth. This research field is at the cutting edge of climate science. Unfortunately for us, that makes it challenging to plan for the future because there are still so many question marks. To understand why sea level rise is so uncertain, we need to understand what's actually causing it in the first place. The first major factor is called thermal expansion, which is just a fancy way of saying that when water heats up, which it is thanks to that whole global warming thing, it expands a tiny bit. It's basically the same process which leads this balloon to expand when Ella sticks it in hot water. I told you Ella was a real scientist. The other major cause of sea level rise is the loss of ice. As temperatures rise, more and more ice melts in the Earth's polar regions. When ice on land melts, it flows into the oceans. So that could be from mountain glaciers or the huge ice sheets of Antarctica and Greenland. But floating ice doesn't contribute to sea level rise. Just like melting ice cubes wouldn't cause your drink to overflow, when ice shelves, sea ice or icebergs melt, they don't add to sea levels. That is actually what my first ever video was about. Never want to miss an opportunity at self-promotion, are ya? And you can watch that up here. So why is the future of sea level rise so uncertain? Just work out how much ice will melt and how much seas will expand in response to global warming and Bingo. Well, unfortunately, it's the opposite of bingo. Ognib. You see, scientists can pretty accurately pin down the amount seas will expand as they heat up. But working out just how much ice is going to be lost, how quickly, well, that's a different matter. I mean, how do you begin to predict how much ice is going to be lost around the world as things heat up? It's a good question, and feel free to have a guess and drop it in the comments below. I'll even pause the video for you. Well, I can tell you how I would do it, which is to look at how ice has been melting over the past decades, and then to extrapolate these processes forward based on the temperatures we can expect in the future. And I'm not the only person who thinks that this would be a good idea. It's a tried and tested approach of climate scientists. But there's a problem. Scientists can also dig up traces of how seas changed in response to natural climate changes in the past, many thousands of years ago. And when they do that... They find that the processes we're seeing today might not be able to explain the huge sea level rises that Earth saw in its past. And so researchers think of other possible processes that we might see, particularly in Antarctica. One of those is marine ice sheet instability. Antarctica is surrounded by floating platforms of ice called ice shelves. And these act as a kind of security system, holding the otherwise unstable ice sheet back. But once these ice shelves succumb to the heat, the ice sheet would be free to flow into the ocean. Scientists have already seen ice sheet instability taking place and fear that it could cause rapid sea level rise in the future. 
But there's another process that researchers think could come into play in the future too. That's marine ice cliff instability. The further ice sheets retreat, the taller the ice cliffs where they meet the sea. But once these ice cliffs are too tall, they'd become unstable. And this would lead to even faster ice loss. Taking these processes into account can lead to much higher predictions for future sea level rise. But the truth is, we're not really sure what will happen. We see this in the latest IPCC report, which says that for the most extreme emission scenario, we could be in for anywhere between 75 centimetres and 2 metres of sea level rise by the end of this century. And just a reminder, these sea level rises might not sound huge, but if you're in any one of the many coastal cities around the world, like say Miami, then even a sea level rise of just a few centimetres could be a massive deal. Plus, research shows that people living in these regions would tragically not be able to sell their homes to Aquaman. The best way to make our predictions of the future better is to improve our understanding of the past and present. Piecing together what happened to ice sheets in the distant past could help us figure out what might happen as we warm the climate. We've also still got so much to learn about the behaviour of modern ice sheets, so getting better at measuring what's happening today is really important for refining our models and to get better at predicting the future. All of this might sound infuriating. We know just how much sea level rise matters, but we don't know just how much sea level rise we're in for. But two things are certain, good news and bad news. I'll let Ella deliver the bad. Thanks, Adam. Sadly, even if we stopped emitting greenhouse gases tomorrow and stabilised temperatures, sea levels would continue to rise. Ice sheets and oceans take a really long time to adjust to changes in the atmosphere, so ice would carry on melting and seas would carry on expanding for centuries. But there is good news too. However bad the problem, we know what will help. It's temperature rises that are driving sea level rises, and so if we can limit global warming, that will limit the amount of sea level rise that we can expect. So while we don't know for sure the process is at play, the best bet to avoid the worst case scenario for sea level rise is to avoid the worst case scenario for global warming, and that means stopping emissions as soon as possible. This video has been about the future of sea level rise, but what have we seen so far in the past, and what can Earth's distant history teach us? And for that matter, how do we even know about Earth's distant history? Wow, what great questions, Adam! And as luck would have it, we've made a video looking into them on my channel. You can, and should, check it out over here. And while you're there, make sure you are subscribed to Ella's criminally underrated YouTube channel. Okay, until next time. Bye. Bye. Ta-da!